Hey, deserving listeners, Mary and Brandon, or Brandon and Mary, depending on your preference, on 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. Thank you guys for coming out here. Yeah. I'm sorry I haven't been able to come over to your house. Because it's a house full of women and Mary's not okay with that. Right. Right. That's right. Wait, what? <laughs> Uh, am I hearing that Mary is jealous, like romantically and sexually jealous of him hanging out with his own mom and sister? What? Let's rewind that. Because it's a house full of women and Mary's not okay with that. Right. Right. That's right. I can't go to your house because it's a house full of women. Oh, uh, because maybe her friends? Uh, or the mom's friends? I'm so, the sister has friends? Uh, 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 what? Uh, what? My mother lives with female roommates, and Mary doesn't want me over there with any of them. <laughs> my my mother, my mother lives with <laughs> roommates, and I can't go to see my mom. And my mom's roommates are presumably 25 plus years older than I am. I mean, that doesn't eliminate the possibility, of course, but and would be a good sitcom. <laughs> but, but my goodness. And when we think, so if we reversed the genders, which is not an exact analogy, but if we did, then it would be obvious that this is abusive, just flat out. If I, for example, told my wife that she couldn't hang out at her parents' house or her brother's place or whatever, couldn't hang out with her family because there are other people around, maybe other men of varying ages, by the way, and therefore no even i mean presumably he would bring her on video call right but uh, anyway so he can't even hang out with it so if so if i told my wife that due to jealousy and concerns about losing her and concerns about her being a a floozy of some sort a bimbo as they used to say on laverne and shirley i learned that word on laverne and shirley uh, anyone old enough to remember the bimbo talk? And uh, what was it? The Magnificent Ragu or the Fantastic Ragu? What was his name? Something Ragu. Anyway, and then, uh, so if I prevented my wife and my wife is telling her family, yeah, you know, McKirk doesn't want me to hang out with anyone in my family because. Uh, you know he's worried that I'm gonna ch that I'm gonna cheat or you know because there's other men around that, so I can't come. I'm sorry. Uh, we would we would know that to be abusive. On the other hand, in other cultural contexts, which we could still say is abusive, it would be the norm. We've seen that on this show too, right? So ick. But uh, uh, yeah, that's um, so. Yeah, we we've seen that so far. There's been a lot of data that. Uh, she is referred to him being jealous and controlling. They call it overthinking, which isn't a bad word, but it's it, it's it minimizes it a little bit. It's like, okay, overthinking, that's one way of putting it. But she has claimed that he has done that to her. She's had to quit college and she lost her scholarship and she can't dance anymore. She can't do photography anymore. And we don't know the circumstances around that. Um, it could be anything from him just saying, dancing might mean you're going to dance with the man. And so that's just out of the question. You're never going to dance again. And she's like, but I will lose my scholarship. I don't care. In fact, you shouldn't even be in college because other boys are there. And so, no, you can't be in college. And then with her, with her uh, uh, modeling, she could have had a legit job as a model. And he is just arbitrarily just like, no, just, even though she's like, hey, if I model full dresses, is that okay? No, I don't want people looking at you. It could be anything from that to uh, on the total end of the spectrum. If what she's saying is truthful, then 
it could have been like her modeling is not a job, but some kind of online activity that he, you know, maybe she was trying to become a bikini influencer or something. And the attention she was getting was concerning to him. And he wrote, ra- he, you know, raised that concern and a fight ensued between the two of them. Cause she's just like, um, it doesn't matter. And he's just like, well, you control me and da, 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 da. And then she's like, okay, fine. I'm not going to do the, that influencer. I'm not going to try for that anymore. And in her mind, she's like, he got jealous. So now I can't be a model when in reality, it wasn't really exactly like he did that with the dancing thing. She mentioned that she had a friend, which I'm going to take, I'm going to take a guess and say it was a guy. And maybe there was something happening there between her and this guy. And he overreacted in some way, but also just said, it's not dancing or college is the problem. It's the fact that you're flirting with this guy. And, and I don't like that. They get in a big fight. And then she's like, fine, I'm not going to dance anymore. So it could be any, it could be, he could be very controlling or it could be something along just conflict wise. And she's just phrasing it that way. It's even possible that she would, because we definitely see that she is jealous and controlling <laughs> like that. Those are factual because we're seeing it right now. Everyone's agreeing. Yeah. I can't go hang out with, uh, now, I guess on the same token, it's possible that this I can't go to see my mom is because he did flirt with one of the mom's friends, <laughs> which, again, I, I don't know why I just feel like that would be a sitcom, a very sad and and sick sitcom of an abandoned boy who <laughs> has an attraction to one of his mom's friends for some very interesting psychological Oedipus reasons. But anyway, so, uh, 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 but it, yeah, it, this, yikes. I feel like I'm being pulled from my siblings and my mom from one side and pulled from Mary by the other. And I don't like that. I just wish they got along. So why does she get so upset about it? Because her ex before me would cheat on her. Is she working on it? She- Great question. So it sounds like he's being, there's a triangle here between family, maybe particularly mom and, and sister. And so you have conflict between mom and sister and Mary, and you have Brandon who is being sucked in to that conflict. Another way of looking at it is that there's conflict between Brandon and Mary and the family is being sucked into it. Another way of looking at it is there's, tension, which is another form of the anxiety that Bowen talked about that leads to triangulation, that there's tension between mom and sister and Brandon and Mary is being discussed. You know, like if I were there, it's possible if I went down a road of assessment and determined that it would might be helpful that they're talking about Mary right now, right? They are discussing the Mary topic and the sister is leading the charge of like, Mary's a problem. I disrespect her. I don't like her. And Brandon is in the position of like trying to please everyone. He doesn't want to hurt his family and he really doesn't want to piss off his girlfriend. So he's just trying to do this. And and Mary is kind of in this, I don't know if it's just a product of the video call, but she's kind of just like this, this omnipotent judge on high. <laughs> she's just like, I'm watching what's happening here. I'm not participating and I'm not smiling, but I'm watching you, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it seems, at least the way they're talking about. So there could, anyway, the point is, is that there could actually be tension between them and Brandon, and they're just talking about Mary because they they can't talk about what the real tension is. And I don't know what that could be. We could imagine, based on what we've heard, that there could be a lot of worry from the mom about uh, what happened with Brandon. Also, I, there could be a lot of anger. But for on, um, I would imagine there would be a lot of anger that Brandon would have very deep, that probably suppressed for the mom, for obvious reasons. But also, why is if they live in town, which it sounds like, or nearby? 
why is Brandon living in a in an RV? Why was why isn't he living with the mom? Now maybe the circumstances aren't set up for that possibility, but you know that would be the typical thing if I when I was his age and I was still in college, my parents uh, 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 paid for my tuition at the very least, and also because I had that privilege, but also if I needed a place to stay, if some, somehow I didn't have a place to stay, I, my parents absolutely would have let me move back in. And that would have been where I were. So there could be a lot of tension between them, a lot of uh, maybe resentment from her to him. I'm, I don't know, I'm just making up a story. And Mary is just irrelevant to that, but they're talking about Mary because they can't talk directly to each other. And that's my big point with this is that differentiated individuals more often than others will directly talk about tension that's happening instead of triangulating a third. So you can think about all your relationships and think about the, the, the things you talk about or the kinds of topics that typically come up or the things you might even fight about. You might be fighting about, so say you and your spouse are fighting about your kids, but really there's tension between you two and you're so worried of directly talking about that tension because you worry it's gonna cause the relationship to blow up or it's gonna result in more pain between the two of you that you would rather talk about the kids. And you might be fighting about the kids, but it's safer to fight about the kids than to really talk about the fundamentals of your relationship. You wanna get better? It's not exactly working on it, but it's something that we both agreed that we'll stop when we're together in person. Okay, not likely, <laughs> but I mean, it is a factor that will help because if she has eyes on him and is around him all the time, then that is reassuring for sure. But it, given how bad it is, I'm guessing it's not gonna eliminate it, but we're hearing she asked a great question, is she working on it? It's a great question because on the show, they don't usually even ask that question because they're not even thinking along those lines. That's what I'm always thinking. If there are people, and there are, you know, as a shrink, I am shrinking everyone's heads all the time, including my own. Everyone has problems. <laughs> and sometimes those problems impact me or people around me in negative ways. You know, if I have a friend who is a jerk face in some way, I don't just say they're a jerk face in some way. I say they have traumas that are resulting in them being a jerk face. And then if there's a discussion about that with the person or without, the question that I wanna know is, are they working on it? Because if they're working on it and it seems legit that they're working on it, then we're good because We'll, you know, we'll, we're, we all have that responsibility and that's the road to not being a jerk face. <laughs> uh, 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 I mean, unless I just really wanna, if I don't, you know, if I'm not connected to the person, I just wanna like uh, distance myself from them. But, but that's always what I wanna know, uh, particularly if someone's really close to me, then yeah, if you got an issue, that's normal. But the question is, are you working on it? <laughs> Uh, and almost all the time in life, and particularly on the show, what he just said is just a classic approach, which never works. Never, if there's one thing you have learned from this channel, which I think would be obvious, that if you have a major problem, <laughs> even minor, but if you especially have a major one, like she does, just saying, I'm not going to do it again, that will never work. It will it's never worked in the history of humanity that you what because whatever led up to that problem is very powerful and and circumvented all of your better judgment for so many things and causes causes so many problems including brainwashing yourself into believing that you're justified to do it such that just having this tiny little non-existent thing called willpower is depending on what we mean by willpower, but the typical way we're talking about it, like in this instance, it, it, it doesn't even exist. It's like talking about a magic crystal that will solve your problems. It's just, um, it's magic thinking. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Uh, uh, research has shown that. We need uh, uh, systems in place and all, all sorts of other kinds of things to actually change something like this. But he, let's rewind that because I'm <laughs> hearing him say that is just like, yep, there it is. 
she's not exactly working on it, but it's something that we both agreed that we'll stop when we're together in person. Will it? I don't know until I get there. Do you, I mean, okay, you have to admit, though, that in this, in the two years that you guys have been together, it hasn't grown into anything beautiful. Ugh. That's uncool. Even if, well, what do you mean by that? And if I were a birdie on the mom's shoulder, I'd be like, don't say that. <laughs> because uh, regardless of what you think or even what is healthy for him, there's a chance that they will be together for a long time. And a lot of problems can happen if you start burning this, this bridge. And she's right there. She can hear you talking to say that there's... After two years, it hasn't grown into something beautiful. Now, maybe they all know what this means. I'm guessing what she means is that there's still a lot of darkness and ugliness and fighting and difficulty. And okay, but clearly for the two of them, they have optimism for the future and or they don't really care because they're so dependent on each other. I think potentially pathologically on a certain level. But, well, I don't know. That's how. That's not necessarily how I'd put it. But point is, is overly attachment reactive and terrified and controlling as a result. But I thought the mom was doing pretty good. And then she says that. That's going to that's, that's gonna be rough. Now, maybe the mom is like, they're not going to work out. They fight all the time. I wouldn't make, I, I, early in my life, I made that call with a friend of mine and said something like that thinking well <laughs> we all know this is this is over i mean who possibly would be able to withstand this kind of relationship for very long well fast forward i don't know a couple decades <laughs> and every time i see them to, I I worry like that they remember that i said that thing and and i since then have never said anything like that. Now, of course, as a therapist, I know that would be stupid to say and unethical potentially, and at the very least unwise, given that I know clinically that a lot of things can happen based on people's choices. But if, if there's one thing, <laughs> to, to use a phrase I use occasionally, that you've learned from this channel, it would be this right here. If there's, what could the mom say and how could she say it? Pause the video, say it out loud or Say it in your head what the mom could say. Maybe type it below. Maybe we could see a, a voting contest. And then what would that sentence be like? So pause here, and then I'll, I'll do a role play. D -d 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 -d. Okay, you're back. Here's what the mom could say, and I'm not saying it's the best thing, but it's one thing. The mom could say, well, Brandon, my boy, and Mary, uh, and that would be good, right? As a mom, mom-in-law, potential mom-in-law, you want to rise above things and be caring towards everybody and recognizing that they both have a lot of traumas <laughs> and that and, and you're part of those you're 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 part of those traumas at least a fourth, you know, given that the dad was also a problem for Brandon. But the mom could say, "Well, Brandon and Mary, I'm I I, I love you both." Brandon, particularly you, Mary, I don't know you that well. Maybe we'll have that connection one day, but you and me, Brandon, and, you know, my, my history, and I'm so sorry for everything, and we've been over this, and I'll continue to apologize, and I've always loved you, and I always care, and I'm, I'm worried. I'll worry about you even if things are going well, but I'm particularly worried because of what I hear from the two of you is that you fight a lot, and that worries me because if you make a major commitment, particularly if you have kids together and you start intertwining all your finances, of which I don't think there is much even for Brandon, then it, that could really cause a lot of consequences. So I hope that the two of you can find a team of therapists to be able to help you with your own traumas and with your relational conflict. But... I don't know anything because I'm just over here and it's not like I have a huge, uh, wonderful track record in relationships. So, you know, what do I know? But I am very worried because I love you and I'm hoping for the best. And if there's anything I can do to help. Okay. 
So that's not one sentence, but <laughs> that's not a nice statement. But it's something like that, right? It's the primary feeling. You're not accusing. You're not being hostile. You're not making any, any assumptions. Uh, you're not jumping to conclusions. You're not burning any bridges. You know, it's highly debatable what she just said. Uh, it's not debatable in all likelihood that she has fear and that she loves them, particularly Brandon. That's not debatable. So, the, you know, my role play, there's no debate. No one can say, no, you don't. That's wrong. If you say, I don't see any beauty in your relationship. Well, what even does that mean? <laughs> That's obviously a massive host hostile statement, not only to Mary, but to Brandon. If I were Brandon, I'd be like, fuck you, mom. What the fuck do you know? You, you, you've been a part of my life recently for a year. I've been with Mary for two years and Mary's always there for me and doesn't abandon me. So, uh -huh. you know, like if I were Brandon, I'd be like, you pass judgment on, like, you think I'm an idiot? What's, you know, and, and look at your, you know, I don't know. But it's, 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 not, it's not a helpful thing to say. Do you, I mean, okay, you have to admit, though, that in this, in the two years that you guys have been together, it hasn't grown into anything beautiful. That's what it you think. Be, it, no. Right. So there's that pushback that Brandon is, is exhibiting. And I'm guessing that he is hurt, that he feels insulted, that he feels threatened, that he's also worried about what Mary would say. But he's deeply in love with Mary. He wants to be with Mary. He sacrifices a lot for her. The way he talks to her seems like it's coming from the heart for him. And to have your mom just be like, it's not beautiful. <laughs> I don't see any beauty. That's what you think, mom. Brandon, it's not what I think. It's reality. Because you guys have built a foundation that on jealousy and distrust is pretty rocky. Just stick with that, Mom. Just say, I'm observing a lot of jealousy and a lot of rockiness. Just stick with that. You're, you're arguing with the boy, the young man that you are trying to help. You are doing all of this because you care about Brandon, right? Well, why are you fighting with Brandon? Why are you in a power struggle with Brandon? So, unfortunate. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's just the mom's way, which I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't have the best of parenting modeled to her when she was a child. I wouldn't be surprised if she is trying to make up for lost time by treating him like he's 15, that kind of a thing. Uh, I don't know but it's not a great approach. Every long distance relationship has that at least a little bit. But it sucks that it spills over into the family dynamic. You can't come see me because I live in a house with females. You can't spend time with your sibling. And in terms of systems theory, one of the things that will happen is that, let's say in all likelihood, there's a part of Brandon that agrees with the bomb that is like, yeah, we do have a lot of conflict and yeah, she does get jealous. And yeah, what if things go badly? And she, and she is jealous. Mary is jealous of some pretty weird things. And I'm pretty young. You know, there's a lot of question marks in his head in all likelihood. And in the moment though, he's not likely to voice those because Mary's right there. And they have a history of what's happening right now, which is that these two, the sister and the mom, will voice all of those negatives. They will point all those out and they will engage in a power struggle with him. And so what will happen is that uh, the, there will be this, these roles that will be adopted by everyone in this system regarding this topic. Because in all likelihood, the mom isn't black and white necessarily. She could be, but it's possible that she also has some nuance there that she's like, well, I'm worried, but I also see some good things, so I don't know. And uh, the family, though, through their routine, particularly bec maybe because the mom leads with this sort of thing and the sister leads with this sort of thing, that when they take on the role of the, nays the naysayer and the, the careful one or the uh, one who alerts danger, then Brandon will take the other role, which is, but it's not all that bad. Whereas if you want, and this is 
parenting advice as well, and also just being an authority, being a boss, a superior, or even just being an inferior, being a having a boss. Uh, when you engage in a debate and you have a hope, you know, let's say you're at work and you have a boss. I'm trying to think what sort of job. Let's say it's Jim Halpert and Steve Carell, Michael Scott in the office. And uh, uh, Jim Halpert, Jim wants to take Friday off, uh, which is tomorrow. Uh, So it's Thursday and Jim's like, oh, you know, it would be great to take a Friday off and we could all get Friday off. So I'm going to go into, uh, you know, Michael Scott's office and I'm going to say, hey, um, let's take Friday off. But Jim's smart. He understands systems theory, and he says, well, but I also know that, and I feel it too, there's a worry about revenue and the budget. You know, if we all take a day off, it could hurt our bottom line, and we could go out of business, or we could lose our bonus from corporate or something. And so, you know, there's some, but I, I feel like we can do it, and I also feel like we need it, and we might even be better uh, sellers of paper next year, next next week, if we could take Friday off. So, you know, I, and plus we all just need a break. And, you know, it's been hard. We've worked really hard. So, you know, I feel like there's some data. So Jim understands how systems work. And so instead of going into Michael Scott's office and says, Michael, Friday, tomorrow, let's all take the day off because we just need to take the day off. And, you know, you're, you're you never let us take a day off and, and you, you need to give this to us. Okay. That's not a, that's a pretty normal way of approaching these situations, which isn't you know, a very wise approach usually. Another approach, which I will say is something that I do, is I go into, so it's Jim, understanding systems, he goes into Michael's office. He says, so Michael, I know that revenue is always a concern and budget's always a concern. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm very, I'm very dedicated to that. And I feel like we all deserve a day off, including you. We've been working really hard. We're kind of worried about the numbers, to be honest, if we take tomorrow off. That is a concern. But I feel like, if, especially if we really crank out some good sales today and uh, take take tomorrow off, I feel like we'll be even rejuvenated for, for next week. We might even be able to get everyone to really work hard next week, and then we can boost our revenue. And I, I can see that happening. You know, we're getting kind of burnt out. So that approach of bringing both arguments to the table gives Michael a chance to think clearly. Whereas if Jim walks in and says, the, you know, the first one, we need to, to, you know, Friday off and you never let us take a day off and if, I'm burnt out. Well, immediately Michael is going to think, but what about the budget? So now Michael has to uh, open the file drawer, the budget drawer, if you will, and start going through all the files and he's pulling out all these files in his head and pointing out all these points. And if Jim says, but we need to borrow off, well, then Michael has to dig even further. But what about the budget? So when the mom presents this idea of there is no beauty in your relationship and I, you need to leave her and this is never going to work, even though in Brandon's mind, there he might think, well, I mean, she's not entirely wrong. She's going on a little strong, but there is, you know, she's right. Mary does get jealous, and we do have a lot of conflict. But no one is voicing the other side, so I need to go into that file cabinet and start flipping through all the evidence that this is actually a good thing, and I'm going to start identifying with those thoughts and voicing those thoughts, and I hear myself voicing those thoughts, and I get dug in. And also, I know that someone else has that job taken care of. Someone else will voice the concerns. I will voice the positives and the optimism. We're good. I hope this makes sense to people because this happens so often in families and at work and in relationships. Another classic example is you have two people who are married and they're raising kids. And one person is the more responsible parent, responsible is a bad word, they are the more disciplinarian person. They are they hold boundaries and limits firmly. Like if the more strict parent says, uh, you know, hey, because you were, you know, giving me a lot of guff at the grocery store, you don't get a cookie tonight or something. Um, 
then that parent will make sure to follow through on that consequence. Whereas the other parent is also a good parent. Um, you know, the strict parent is a loving parent, but the more passive parent is also very loving and sets limits sometimes. What happens though, is that even though both parents are within the realm of good parenting, because there's a lot of different types of good parenting, by the way, which not a lot of people hold to be true, but even though they're both fine and can probably work out a system that will work within their strengths, when there's a tension, they you know, will fight with each other. So say the kids are at, in bed and the, you know, the more strict but loving parent says, um, earlier at dinner, like you completely undermined me and you were completely uh, uh, too passive with the kids. You, you, you let them walk all over you. They're, you're spoiling them. Well, the passive parent might have been thinking, yeah, I, I think I actually dropped the ball there. But certainly I'm not like an awful parent. So fuck that shit. Okay, open my file cabinet of, well, you know what's in here? The kids want to hang out with me more often than they want to hang out with you. And I see some of the kids, their dreams are being dashed on the rocks when you come down on them about things. Uh, uh, you know, you, uh, uh, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I just said, <laughs> it made sense in my head. Anyway, you get my point. And so uh, you repeat that over time, which often happens because people don't go to therapy enough. Then what you end up happening, happening is the strict parent becomes more strict and more sure of their strictness and less loving. The passive parent becomes more passive and you know, maybe still loving, but uh, completely like no boundaries at all, no authority, no limitations on the children, maybe even like encouraging the kids to rebel against the more strict parent. And the kids are suffering, the parents are suffering, and essentially the system and the individuals brainwash themselves. You know, they started out more like this, but over time they become polarized. You know, if you've ever been through these kinds of long-term conflicts, particularly in marriage, you've seen this happen, <laughs> where there might have been a little difference, and then it just becomes like completely black and white. And the individuals believe that to be true. You know, the strict parents just like limitations is the single most important. You know, in the beginning they're like, yeah, limitations are important, but love is also part. On, at the end of the road, they're like limitations, 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 and who cares about love? And the other person is just like. Uh, any rules, you know, the passive parents, like any rules is abusive to children and you just need to let them be and everything will be fine. And they're both ridiculous, but given their lack of understanding how systems work and lack of intervention, there's this polarization. So with the mom approaching it this way, it, we could be seeing the result of a year because I'm guessing that there's been a conflict at least for a number of months, if not the entire year that he's been living in Oregon again. And the sister and the mom are presenting this side and he is presenting this other side. And so he's becoming more and more optimistic and more and more ridiculous that he would continue a relationship that would be this conflictual. It could even lock in, and I've seen this before, where he's like, I am my own person. I uh, am not uh, uh, my mom's kid because I'm not my mom's kid and I'm not, I'm not my dad's kid. I had to give that up a long time ago. And I'll be damned if they're gonna be right about something. So whatever happens, I'm never leaving Mary because I, I don't wanna necessarily be with Mary if this is true but I definitely don't want to give them the satisfaction that they're right. That's what a power struggle creates. Okay, well, let's adjourn there. And everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.